This is WNCW's Friday feature interview of the week. I'm Paul Foster. Our subject matter, the documentary film, The Spirits Still Move Them, concerning regional moonshine or moonshiners of Western North Carolina. Its world premiere will take place next Thursday, June 17th in Asheville. This documentary is another in a long line of amazing and informative films from the Center for Cultural Preservation based in Hendersonville. My guest from the center is is the director, David Weintraub. Good morning. Good morning. Let me first share that David is an award-winning director and producer for documentaries from the center. So, David, why did the center feel like this was an important story to share? Well, it's moonshine, right? So, <laughs> you know, it's it's a fascinating part of history, and, and I guess growing up with the Beverly Hillbillies and uh, Petticoat Junction and Green Acres, you get kind of a misshapen notion of what moonshine history really is. You know, I've done hundreds of oral histories in this area, Western North Carolina particularly, and moonshine plays such a central role in the lives of people here. And, and, you know, kind of what you hear portrayed in the media typically is that they're lazy and they're drunk and they're outlaws and can't hold a regular job, wear long beards and have longer arrest records. And the only redeeming value they have is for their entertainment value. The, the reality is that um, it was just a creative way of survival. Most people living here were poor farmers, and um, what you had was what you ate, and what you made, what you grew, um, what you could barter. But when the tax man came uh, knocking on the door, you still needed cash money, and moonshine was just a reliable way of being able to, to do that. Staying with that misconception about who and what was a moonshiner, moonshiners were also even African Americans and Native Americans, weren't they? I mean, it was about someone's survival. Absolutely, and and I think that was something that that I didn't realize until I started uh, doing interviews and meeting with some of the historians who've who've done some great publication on this, like Dan Pierce at UNCA. African Americans played a central role here um, in western North Carolina and throughout North Carolina as bootleggers and moonshiners. Fortunately, I was able to interview some for the film and, and will be in the film. And women as well play, played an important role um, as lookouts and to gather the wood. But, you know, in, in many cases, it was almost like an informal social service in, in this region, in the southern Appalachians, where if you lost your husband or your husband got sick, um, that it was almost expected that uh, you could be a bootlegger, uh, uh, you could be a moonshiner. And uh, the authorities would, would not uh, prosecute like they would uh, the others. And we feature a number of those stories of women moonshiners in this film. Speaking of individuals who are featured in the documentary, tell us about Cody Bradford. Well, Cody is, uh, his family goes back in these mountains to the 1700s in Yancey County. He's a fifth generation moonshiner, the first in his family to do it legally. I was able to interview uh, all the living members of his family who are connected to moonshine. His uncle, his father, uh, Cody runs the Howling Moon uh, Moonshine and Distillery in Asheville, and they're still using a 150-year-old um, still uh, from his great-great-great-grandfather. He makes moonshine the traditional way. It's interesting to, to go to this distillery to see what he does, but also to uh, talk with his family and understand uh, their connection to moonshine, the role that it played in their lives. It was about putting food on the table. It wasn't about shootouts with the law. It wasn't about all the things that the media kind of wants to focus on. And their family is back to Scotland and Ireland, and they were making uh, alcohol way back when. And here, of course, there was a long time in, in this country's history that moonshine was perfectly legal. It wasn't until after the Civil War that it wasn't. And part of what he learned in, in opening up his distillery is just the incredible intelligence you needed to have. You need to be a chemist. You need to know about physics. It was incredibly hard work to, to be a moonshiner. And then have to worry about the elements worrying about the, the bears uh, and the skunks and the snakes kind of liked hanging around the stills because of the, the heat that it provided and also uh, some of the taste of the mash. Uh, and, of course, you had to worry about the law. Cody uh, is able to put this, these traditions. He studies the history. 
He's still making the moonshine based on the traditional recipe that they were using. It's a really interesting story. Our Friday feature interview of the week guest is David Weintrop with the Center for Cultural Preservation as we continue our conversation about the new documentary film called The Spirits Still Move Them. David, what is one of the other big focuses of the film? I think there's this notion today of the separation between church and, and jar that didn't exist way back when. There's just so much in the, you start to look at the research, uh, ministers being busted for making moonshine. You talk to the old timers in any community here in Western North Carolina, they'll tell you that all the churches, uh, 90 year old, 100 year old churches and older, they're all built by moonshine money. So today there's this you know, morality thing um, with, with alcohol, but, but then it was just understood that it was how people survived. The tithings, it came from moonshine money just like it came from it, everything else and um, it was part of the tradition um, I, I think I think what we kind of miss sometimes is the hallmark of Appalachian culture was the ability to make something out of nothing whether that was scratching out a living on poor soil or, or turning the remains of your harvest into liquor um, and that's what I learned and it, it's, it's a journey at the end of it, you realize all those misconceptions that you had. And, and often the truth is, is so much more interesting than the, the falsities that we hear. David, the film is actually going to be premiering at a number of locations several days in a row. It'll start next week on the 17th in Asheville. Go over that entire list for us, if you will. Sure. First of all, all the showings will have music performed by Apple Country uh, String Band or the uh, Bandana Rhythm. So local musicians, and they actually happen to be in the film as well. And so on Thursday, the 17th, Orange Peel at 7 p.m. Then the following day on the 18th at 8 p.m., we'll be at North R- River Farm. It'll be our first drive-in theater. So you drive in there, um, hear the music, watch the film, and then we'll have it at all the the uh, screenings as well. We'll have some moonshiners who appear in the film uh, talking about their history afterwards. And then finally, um, for this series of showings, on the 20th, Sunday the 20th, at Southern Appalachian Brewery in Hendersonville uh, at 8 p.m., we'll be showing the film as well, also having the music and discussion with the moonshiners afterwards. Should those planning to attend have their tickets in advance, David? I would highly recommend people get tickets in advance. We're about to be sold out in one of the venues, and uh, things are starting to pick up given uh, we're almost there. So highly recommend that. Um, you know, People show up. They may or may not get a seat. And, and so go on to the website, order the tickets in advance. You can also get the DVD discount if you purchase the DVD at the time that you order your ticket. And what is the name of that website? The website is saveculture.org, S-A-V-E culture.org. Called The Spirits Still Move Them, about moonshining in western North Carolina. It's another great documentary coming from the Center for Cultural Preservation. Their director, David Weintrop, has been our guest. David, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Paul. Friday features are also available as a podcast on our website, wncw.org. I'm Paul Foster.